If you enjoy watching Common Ground online, please consider making a tax-deductible donation at lptv.org. I think for both the orchestra and the community, having that continuity, you know, we all start out, we get to know one another, I get to know their style, they get to know mine, you get to know the community and its likes and its dislikes, and it gives you an opportunity, it's just like, you know, any other relationship, it gives you that opportunity to grow and to change together and to really develop something that I don't think can happen if you're skipping around and going from one place to another for two or three years. When I auditioned for this position and then happily and luckily got selected to be their conductor and I first came here, our concerts were here in the main theater at Banksburg. Sometimes our concerts were even at the Beaux Arts Ballroom and I think that's where my first concert was that season. And so we probably had I'm going to say maybe 25 people playing in the orchestra, just very small. It's something like four violins, two cellos, a bass, some winds, and maybe 150 people at the audience. And within about two or three years after we had the great fortune to be able to move our concerts to Bemidji High School Auditorium, that really increased our audience. We made them all where they're on Sunday afternoons, primarily on Sunday afternoons at 3 p.m., which seems to be a good time for Bemidji audiences to get out and attend. And um, also, we just began to build the orchestra. And so what happened with that is when you start doing that, you have to bring in people from the outside. And you have to be very careful about that because you don't want those core members who have stood with this orchestra through thick and thin, you don't want them to feel like they're not needed or valued or appreciated. So we did that in a way that I think everybody felt good about it and started that process of bringing in what we call ringers from the outside. But as a result of that, the sound got better. We also changed our rehearsal schedule. So instead of rehearsing once a week, every week, kind of in a format of a church choir or other community-based group, we rehearse more like a professional regional orchestra. So we have a set of anywhere from two to five rehearsals before each of our concerts. And that condensed period actually helps people be more focused. They can pick up their music at least two weeks prior to that so they can start working on it and have an idea of any problems they might have before they get to that first rehearsal. And all of that just really changed the whole dynamic of everything here. And we just started building from there. We have a great procedure here of bringing in guest artists. I think anybody would tell you that a highlight was having the great pianist Andre Watts here. Um, when we had the opportunity to bring him, I think there were board members who didn't really believe he was coming until he walked out on stage. Um, it was just so amazing to have someone like that. But since then we've had, you know, Carol Winsons from Juilliard and, and Murray Sidlin and just incredible performers. And that elevates our group too, because they feel like, wow, we're getting to share the stage. And when we're all there, we're all there as one. So that brings us kind of full circle to that idea of the collaboration, that regardless of the stature or notoriety of our artist or what I'm doing, that we're all there as one unified group presenting this music. I would like to say to the community, many, many thank yous as an orchestra member. Many thank yous for the support that you are giving the symphony. Top-rate soloists have high salaries, and Dr. Everett bringing in these good soloists takes community support. And from a person in the orchestra, I want to say to the community, thank you very, very much for your uh, your support, your financial contributions. Thanks a lot.
frequently you'll hear people will say, well, they didn't even, they'll come to a concert here and they didn't know that it even existed. You yeah, know, we hear that, that yeah, a lot. Yeah. They didn't and know it existed. I, it, again, that has to do with PR and, and that has gotten much better since Beverly is here because she is very knowledgeable how you get the word out. Well, so, on the board, but yeah, PR yeah. in general mm -hmm. yeah, yes. can still be missed by many people. Uh, if they aren't looking for it, they're not going to see it. So, somebody once, uh, well, I think a, fr a friend of mine from town, having done business, we did a children's concert, and it might have been with Libby Larson, but preceding the Libby Larson concert, we did a collection of orchestra, everybody's favorites you should know of, of the orchestra, and we did excerpts or movements of them. We did about maybe 10 pieces, and I would talk about them to the audience ahead of time. And Steve saw me one time in the store. He'd been to that concert, I believe, because uh, one of his nieces or his own kids or somebody were, was on the stage for the Libby Larson, and he, he said, I didn't know you did that. He was so amazed that we had done that and that I talked to the audience. He said, I don't know, I didn't know you did that sort of thing. And I said, well, that's what we do. If you go, you see that all the time. But a lot of people miss it if they don't happen to get there. So it's pretty amazing that a community this size for over 75 years has had a very serious symphony orchestra playing all, almost all, of the major pieces uh, in the repertoire, uh, new and old. Uh, contemporary pieces as the Libby Larson music was to Bach and Beethoven. So one hopes that uh, this will inspire more of an audience to continue. We've had good crowds the last few years and we hope to keep that growing. If anyone would like to be a part of the symphony, either as a board member or to play in our group, they could look at our website. We have an executive director now that takes a lot of our questions and does a lot of the work that no one sees. The BSO is largely a volunteer organization and if anyone is interested in uh, volunteering we have a lot of places we can plug you in either as a board member or working on our annual gala fundraiser which is Desserts by Design that we have in September. The BSO offers a lot of different opportunities to be involved and you don't just have to be a board member. It's true that board members do a lot of things, but there's also the potential to be involved in, in very easy things that allow you to participate and, and be involved in the concert. Come and be an usher. I help coordinate ushers. Getting involved with the orchestra can be as simple as just catching one of us at a concert. They'll be happy to get your name and phone number and see how you can you know, might fit in and what the possibilities are. If anyone is interested in, in volunteering or even perhaps wanting to audition to perform with the orchestra, they can contact the Bemidji Symphony Orchestra office and you can find the contact information on our website which is bso at bemidjisymphony.org or 444-7914, you can give us a call. The community can help out the orchestra. There's volunteers that hand out programs. There are volunteers that take care of the music, and that can be a big chore sometimes. Just the awareness that the symphony is here and it does require support from the community is a big thing. There are so many ways that you can be involved with a civic orchestra like Bemidji. If you're a musician, you can audition and talk to us about that. We have a personnel manager and that information should be available on our website or you can call our office and get the contacts for, for that. Our musicians sometimes, they go on vacation or they can't play a certain concert and so our personnel manager, Gretchen Rush, she keeps a running list of of people and so we're always looking for new people and especially in our string sections you know we can always use more numbers from from our local pool here and that there are ways to be involved as a volunteer and I think just for anybody watching this program just being an ambassador for our orchestra knowing that we have one I think there's still people in Bemidji that have no idea there's an orchestra here 
and talking about it, t you know, telling people, hey, did you know there was an orchestra? And, you know, even go to the person that you think is the least likely <laughs> to want to hear classical music and bring them to a concert. All ISD 31 students get into our concerts free. A lot of people don't know that. And so it's a wonderful event to bring your family. Our holiday concert is one I'll just point out that it's especially nice for that. Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the Vote of the People November 4th, 2008. If you enjoy watching Common Ground online, please consider making a tax-deductible donation at lptv.org.